I'm off to Comic-Con, which means a lot of Comic-Con coverage is coming your way shortly, right here on Beyond the Trailer, but also on my other channel, Think About the Ink. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any Comic-Con videos, then you might want to bookmark the playlist that's in the video description of this video. Uh, I'm going to put everything in that playlist, so that way you won't have to worry about missing any videos as they're going to be going up at odd times, you know, whenever I can get them up. Uh, but if you're also going to Comic-Con like me, I hope that you'll come visit me at the Boom Studios booth. I will be there every day for one hour. Uh, not only, you know, having Superbia, but, you know, just, you know, there's no, you know, don't feel that you have to buy Superbia if you come and, and visit me. It's just nice to be able to see everyone and, and talk to you in person. So if you're there on Thursday, I'll be there from 4 to 5 p.m. at the Boom Studios booth. On uh, uh, Friday, I'm sorry, it'll be very early in the morning. It'll be 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. On Saturday, it'll be 10 to 11 a.m. And on Sunday, it'll be at 11, uh, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. So, uh, you know, that's all there. You can rewind if you didn't catch it. But if you're going to be at Comic-Con, I would love to meet you. All right. So, you know, a lot of news is going to be coming out of Comic-Con. Uh, we're all very excited about these movies. I love that people get excited about movies. I get excited about movies. But I just wanted to touch base on, um, you know, I don't know. I'm sure you've seen the, uh, my Pacific Rim uh, review if you're a regular watcher of this channel. And you might have noticed that it had, um, there were a lot of a lot of mean, angry comments that I, you know, didn't give it a glowing review, even though I gave it a B. You know, I certainly didn't hate the film, but I just felt it was a little weak on story. Um, you know, just worse than I would say the Man of Steel backlash. It was really crazy. And I've been talking to some people and uh, they're like, well, you know, there's kind of like a movement of saying we really need to support Pacific Rim no matter what because it's an original story. Uh, and, and my friend actually said something pretty funny about it. He was like, well, it's just going to become another franchise anyway. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's like some, it's like an art house film or something. You know, you're just, you're just supporting the beginning of a franchise that next year or two years from now, well, you know, you'll, you might feel it's, it'll be the same problem that you're trying to fight against now. Uh, but anyway, so I, I, can, but I can appreciate that you guys want to see more originality out of Hollywood. However, I think it's a mistake to just give a movie a blank check or to forgive it for its flaws because you like what it stands for overall. Uh, I think that's going to make Hollywood just get sloppier and sloppier. I think that just gives them the, you know, the right, the excuse to, to do the things that we don't like. You know, if Hollywood executives know that if they present you with uh, robots fighting giant sea monsters, sea monster aliens, uh, and you're going to give them a pass on the script, then they're not going to work as hard on the script. And they're going to say, well, look at all these comments. You know, the, they simply, you know, the audience simply doesn't care. That's not totally true, by the way, because, you know, Pacific Rim, uh, is not doing particularly well at the box office. Uh, it wasn't, it was not, debut number three here in the United States, and it was, uh, you know, it was number two worldwide, still behind Despicable Me too. But I don't want to make this a, I don't want to talk about Pacific Rim here in particular. I'm just talking about quality in movies. And I really think it's a flawed argument to say that a blockbuster doesn't have to have a good script. Because take Die Hard, for example. That script is so beautifully constructed uh, in its simplicity and, you know, the way it sets things up effortlessly without you know without you knowing what's being set up you know stuff with like oh take your shoes off you know for you know to, t to relieve stress after the flight but that is so important later on that he took his shoes off I mean just really brilliant writing and you know there was a time when people used to buy screenplays uh, because they were so well written and people would read them like books they would dissect them they wanted to have them on their shelf and I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a movie recently that you wanted to do that for a and I don't think any of you would want to buy the script for Pacific Rim uh, and, and I think that it, it's a problem that this is happening. And, you know, this was supposed to be the summer of big blockbuster movies. Uh, you know, there were supposed to be so many that, it, you know, Hollywood was wondering how everyone would see them all. We were wondering how we would see them all. But yet I do not think there's a single movie that's come out this year, maybe Fast and Furious 6, but I don't think there's a single, you know, definitive film that has been enjoyed by the majority. I would say every film has its serious detractors. Uh, be, the, be they very vocal or be they, be they actually just very large in numbers. But it just has not been a movie that's been embraced by audiences overall. And I think considering how many movies are coming out, that's just shocking uh, and, and disappointing, you know. So I, 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 if you're going to try and, you know, use your ticket money to do something good, you know, I think it's wonderful you want to promote originality. But let's also try and promote good script writing because for any movie, blockbuster, Oscar movie, you know, indie film, anything, all movies begin at the same place, and that's the script. And I, I just think we just cannot, we cannot, uh, we have to hold the line on that. We can't give way. I, I just, I feel so strongly about it. it it's really important. 
Uh, but so, you know, I mentioned that there are no movies that everyone uh, agrees with. So, uh, you know, let's kind of like uh, be on a happy note here. And I'm going to talk about, I want to give you my list of the films that I really like so far this year the most. Now, there are films on this list that I enjoy, but I'm talking about films that I would recommend someone see in theaters. Uh, so this is my list of films. You know, we're about the halfway point, basically a little past it for the year. Uh, and so I just wanted to share my own list of what I've enjoyed so far. And I'm sure a lot of you will agree, and I'm sure a lot of you will disagree. So you know what? That's great. Let's have a debate about it and share your own lists in the comments down below. All right. So I, and I did them in the or I did I even did them in order of how much I like them. All right. So uh, the number one film I liked so far this year was The Great Gatsby in 3D. I can't stress to you enough how important it is I feel this film be seen in 3D. Uh, I wonder how it's going to play in 2D when it goes to, to video and you know on demand and stuff like that. But I really, really enjoyed it. It's an interesting film and it played much better overseas than it did here, but it still did pretty well here as well. Um, my second favorite film of the year is World War Z. Uh, you can check out my review for that. I think I went into a lot of depth as to why I enjoyed it. I really liked the international quality of it. I liked the, I liked the realism of it, um, you know, and I liked I like the, you know, the intellect, you know, it was an intellectual blockbuster, I felt, and I really enjoyed it. It was the Jason Bourne of zombie movies, in my opinion. Uh, the third film for me was This Is The End. Just a top-notch comedy that was just laugh after laugh. It never lost its momentum, which seemed impossible considering, you know, the premise. It just never slowed down. It was very inventive. And, you know, I really, I don't think I laughed that much in any other movie this year. I really liked it. Uh, fourth, I, you know, I have to say Iron Man 3. Uh, I feel that it, you know, the the twist was a, a major misstep for Marvel. I'll be curious to see how it affects their bottom line going forward. It's still the top movie of the year by far, with over a billion dollars worldwide. It's currently the only film in the billion dollar club, um, so it still did very well at the box office. But we'll have to see if you know, like uh, a little seed of hate has been planted in the fan base for for Marvel based on that. But I really liked it a lot. You know, I said I I felt that a diff I felt that an Asian actor should have played the guy Pierce role. But uh, other than that, I really liked it. I thought it was very well done. And I thought Shane Black, fantastic return to form. Uh, the, the fifth film that I liked this year was 42. It was, a, it was, a, it was an old time Hollywood uh, biography. And I thought, but I thought it was very well done. I thought it had a lot of heart. Uh, I really liked Harrison Ford's performance, shocker. Uh, I thought uh, Chadwick Boseman was a, a great new talent on the scene. And it was just a really interesting story. Very, you know, very, and, and it wasn't too, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, really pulling on the heartstrings too much. I think it just did what it was supposed to do. Really good old-fashioned Hollywood filmmaking. Uh, next up, uh, so that was number five. Number six, interestingly, Fast and Furious 6. Talk about a guilty pleasure. I had such a good time watching this movie. I saw it by myself when I was at Phoenix Comic Con during a break. I had a really good time. I saw it on a giant screen. I laughed out loud when The Rock was so big that when he punched someone in the face, it was ridiculous. And, you know, I just... That, that talk about, you know, not losing steam, this is a franchise that isn't losing steam. It's actually picking up speed. Uh, next, so number seven, would be Oz the Great and Powerful. I know a lot of people didn't enjoy this, uh, but I loved it. I thought it was respectful of the original Wizard of Oz, which I'm very excited to see in IMAX 3D, by the way, in, uh, come in September. I'm definitely seeing that for its uh, one-week engagement. I saw a preview in front of Pacific Rim, and it looked like they did a wonderful job remastering it, uh, Warner Brothers. It was really impressive. Uh, but I just liked it. I thought James Franco's performance was inspired. I loved, you know, that it, that it, it didn't, you know, it didn't try and, you know, whitewash the idea, or, you know, uh, of a con man. You know, he truly was a con man. Uh, I thought, you know, of course, the women's roles, not great, uh, actually pretty bad to some degree, but I thought it worked within the t context of the story. It, I, I, didn't, I didn't take me out of it. And also, wonderful 3D, really great, um, you know, set design, really well done. And then, eighth film for me of the year so far, I only went up to eight, I don't have ten, I'm afraid. Um, eight so far, Pain and Gain. I know a lot of you hated this movie and thought it was in bad taste. And uh, to some degree, I think it is a little bit in bad taste. But I thought it was such a powerful, powerful look at American greed and stupidity and how when those two are mixed together, they can be just so incredibly dangerous. And, uh, it, was, and it was perfect 90s filmmaking. You know, this is a story that took place in the 90s. And it was just, you know, it was like every trick that Michael Bay has learned used in this one spot to make, I felt, a film with a message. Uh, and great performances across the board, from Mark Wahlberg to Dwayne Johnson to Anthony Mackie. Really well done film. Really, and even Tony Shalhoub, great. I have the soundtrack. It's great. And I, and I, I uh, listen to it at the gym, actually. <laughs> um, also, I would also like to note that I haven't seen Despicable Me 2 yet. I promised my sister I would see it with her when I was on, um, when I go and visit her later this week. Uh, or no. 
you know, after Comic-Con. So, so anyway, those are my top films of the year. I urge you to share yours. I hope you'll check out all the San Diego uh, coverage coming up. It's going to be again here on Beyond the Trailer and Think About the Ink, but check out the um, playlist below and so you won't miss any of it. So thank you for your patience in the build-up to San Diego Comic-Con, and I hope that you feel uh, that all the prep work I've, did, I've done trying to get interviews together for you pays off. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I will, uh, next time you, talk, uh, you see me, I'll be in San Diego.